Right, good uh, morning, everyone, and I welcome members to the 35th meeting in 2014 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. As always, ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one, instruments subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the advice and assistance assistance by way of representation Scotland Amendment <coughs> Regulations 2015 at draft, nor upon the European Protection Order Scotland Regulations 2014 at draft. Is the committee content with those instruments, please? Okay. Agenda item two, instruments subject to negative procedure, the conservation of salmon, annual close time and catch and release, Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014, 327. The schedule sets out the various dates during which salmon fishing is permitted in each salmon fishery district. Entry 50, uh, relating to the Ur district, states that rod and line fishing is permitted during the dates of the 10th of September to brackets, 31st of October, close brackets, open brackets, 29th October, close brackets. Scotland governance confirmed the intended date is the 30th of November and the other references are in error. Does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention on reporting ground I, as entry 50 of the schedule appears to be defectively drafted? Thank you. Does the committee agree to note, however, that the Scottish Government has undertaken to amend the provision in due course? The Charities Account Scotland Amendment No. 2 Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 335, the Charities Accounts Scotland Amendment Regulations 2014, SSI 2014, 295 were considered by the committee at its meetings on the 25th of November uh, 2014, where it was agreed to draw the attention of the Parliament to certain minor inaccuracies in respect to the names and dates of publication of the various statements of recommended practice for accounting and reporting by charities, known as SORPs, referred to in the regulations. These instruments... This instrument therefore revokes SSI 2014 295 and gives the correct names and dates of publication of the various sorts. There has therefore been a failure to observe the requirements of Section 282 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010. The instrument will come into force on the 1st of January 2015, meaning the requirement to leave a minimum of 28 days, excluding recess dates, between laying and coming to force has not been complied with. The committee may, however, wish to find the breach acceptable in this instance because the Scottish Government is seeking to make corrections to satisfy the committee's report on the previous instrument. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention on reporting ground J as there has been a breach of the 28 day rule? Okay. Does the committee agree to report, however, that it finds the breach of this rule to be acceptable in this instance? Agreed. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Civil Jurisdiction and Judgments Protection Measures Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 333, nor on the Plant Health Import Inspection Fees Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 338, nor on the Regulation of Investigatory Powers, Authorisation of Covert Human Intelligence Sources Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014 339. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Content. <laughs> Agenda item three is the Assisted Suicide Scotland Bill. And the purpose of this item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers in the bill at stage one. The committee is invited to agree the questions it wishes to raise with the member in charge, Patrick Harvey, MSP, on the delegated powers in the bill. It's suggested that these questions are raised in written correspondence. The committee will have the opportunity to consider the responses at a future meeting before agreeing a draft report on the bill. Section 23 of the Bill provides that Scottish Ministers may issue directions about how licence facilitators are to act, and licensing authorities are required to use best endeavours to ensure that these directions are complied with by licence facilitators. Licensing authorities must have regard to any guidance issued by Scottish Ministers, and any such directions or guidance must be published. Does the committee agree to ask the member in charge for an explanation of the following matters in relation to the powers to issue directions and guidance in section 23? <coughs> Firstly, how those powers will be used, or may be used, pardon me. Secondly, what matters the directions and guidance could cover and why this would be appropriate rather than these matters being contained in regulations under section 22. And lastly, why it is appropriate that licensing authorities should be required to use best endeavours to ensure that directions are complied with by licence facilitators. Stuart. Um, I'm certainly content with the questions that are proposed, but I would suggest that we should ask a further uh, couple of questions um, in relation to Section 23, Directions and Guidance for Facilitators and Licensing Authorities. 
um, the, the, there is no parliamentary procedure associated with this, and I think we should ask uh, the proposer of this bill why there is no parliamentary procedure, because it would appear uh, that uh, if facilitators, a quite novel and new uh, role, have to have regard to uh, the directions and guidance, uh, there should be a process, at the very least, of laying these before Parliament and perhaps uh, gaining Parliament's approval uh, for these uh, directions and guidance and we should ask the proposal of the Bill why that has not been uh, considered and included. Thank you. Do you members have any other comments? John? Yes, I mean again I support the, the fact that we ask these questions. Um, I mean I'm not enthusiastic about the Bill as a whole and in some ways I find it strange that we, look, we start getting into the detail here before we've debated the, the principles of the Bill. However, be that as it may, um, yes, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, directions and guidance could mean quite a lot. And, you know, we have seen other uh, controversial areas like, for example, abortion, where the, the practice over the years seems to have drifted away from what was originally intended. Mm -hmm. And I would certainly want to be sure that, you know, there would be a fairly firm line on directions and guidance, uh, for example, in supervising the licensing authorities and the licensed facilitators uh, over time. And, and plus this phrase, uh, best endeavours, yeah. which is in the questions because other, as far as I'm aware, other legislation and regulations generally, either they have to be applied or they have not to be applied, but um, best endeavours kind of would, would let anybody off with anything almost. I, I think our advice is that best endeavours is probably not a legal term. So uh -huh. I think we're with you, John. Uh, thank you, um, convener. Uh, I would just um, agree that um, while I oppose this bill utterly in principle, um, if it is to go beyond the stage we're currently at today, it, um, the regulations must be very tight and very accurate, and uh, there should be no um, room for dubiety in terms of an interpretation. Best endeavours is simply not good enough. Um, and I have to say, I find the term facilitators almost Orwellian in concept or mm -hmm. Kafkaesque. It's particularly unattractive. Right, I think your, your comments are, are, are noted. So I, I take it that we have approval of the three questions which I had suggested. We also take Stuart Stevenson's question. Uh, does anybody want to, to add? Yeah, please do. It's a question in relation to direction and guidance for facilitators and also for licensing authorities separately. Right, so it's, so it's effectively two questions. Yes, Thank correct. you. Thank you for confirming that point. Are members happy that we ask those questions? Yes. Super. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, I think that brings us to the end of agenda item three, unless I've missed anything, in which case I can now close the meeting.